Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 46 for Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. Microsoft Apps. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash arena. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash arena. Boom! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. If you had asked me even a few months ago if I'd make an entire episode based around Microsoft's apps for Android, I probably would have laughed. Maybe not a deep from the bellows type laugh, but I probably would have snickered at least a little bit. Uh, let's face it, Microsoft is totally on a roll right now. Not only is the company making news for its many Windows-based efforts and even its virtual reality effort, HoloLens, uh, but we keep hearing about awesome new apps hitting the Android ecosystem. Some of them tie directly into Microsoft's rich history of productivity and office tools. Others are merely cool side projects that demonstrate how the company is playing around with ideas, kind of playful, seeing what the public likes, seeing what sticks. We're going to cover the gamut on today's episode and show you a handful of some of Microsoft's coolest, somewhat niche apps. That's in today's Roundup. First up from Microsoft, a replacement lock screen app. You might not realize, but Microsoft has released a couple of these to the Play Store. One that seemed to get a lot of coverage last year called Next Lock Screen, and another that I'm gonna show off here called Picturesque Lock Screen. Picturesque taps into Microsoft's Bing search engine, putting it front and center on your device before everything else at the lock screen. The app is painted underneath by a recent photo pulled directly from Bing. If you don't like the photo, you can just shake the phone and a new one will appear. If you like it a bunch, you just swipe right and you'll get a full screen version of that picture with the options to download or delete, meaning it won't ever be set as your backdrop again. On the main screen, you get your most frequently used apps at the bottom for quick launching and the time and weather are located up top there. Again, pulled directly from Bing. And above all of that is a handy Bing search bar. Now, swiping left again takes you to a news feed pulled from Bing's news service, and you have a small list of sections to limit those stories to. All stories can be tapped into and loaded inside the browser uh, running within the picturesque app. And one more swipe to the left takes you to some device toggles like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, the standard stuff. Also some settings for the app itself and a small section devoted to showcasing Microsoft's other awesome apps. There are some aspects that I really like about Picturesque. The main screen on the app looks clean and if Bing is your go-to, it makes it easy to launch into a search with no friction. Other parts definitely require work at this point. For instance, tapping to download or delete an image pulls up an outdated prompt that doesn't really match the lollipop aesthetic anymore. And often, swiping up to go to your home screen actually took me to Lollipop's usual lock screen filled with my notifications. So that's two stages just to get to the home screen. That's a big miss. But if Bing is your buddy, you might as well give Picturesque a try for yourself. You can find it for free in the Play Store. Next up is an app that wasn't developed by Microsoft. It was swallowed up by the company when it realized that it was damn good. Sunrise Calendar is two key components. The first one is the one that it's known for, a fantastic calendar app, though the layout is definitely different from what you might be used to. Up top, you have your calendar picker. It's narrow at first, but dragging down opens it up to a full month's worth. Now you can tap a date, and then the lower half of the screen shows any events taking place on that day and beyond, 
which you can easily scroll through. Sunrise does a good job placing little graphical touches next to events that it can identify categorically. For instance, this camping trip that I have coming up this weekend has a little tree next to it. I also like how the red dial down below points in the direction of what today is as you scroll through the list. Cool little details like that make Sunrise fun to use. Swipe left and you can see a full screen three day view broken down by the hour. And setting up appointments of course is pretty straightforward as well. And finally, the second component of Sunrise is a newly added keyboard replacement that they call Meet. But it's really more of a keyboard supplement since it doesn't really stay ever present if you want to actually type words. You switch between your default keyboard and Meet when needed. So what is Meet? Inside any app, I tap the keyboard picker icon, select Sunrise Keyboard, and that reveals the integrated calendar scheduling keyboard. This essentially means the keyboard is replaced with a new interface designed to make picking open blocks of time in your schedule, choosing a location or time zone, and setting the amount of time for an event, a piece of cake. Once I've picked the open times and filled out the rest of the details, Meet, or as it says here, Sunrise Keyboard, will then create a URL to that event for sharing. I can send that to the recipient and then they pick the time that works best for them. Once that is confirmed, our meeting is added to both of our calendars automatically. And they don't need Sunrise in order to do this either. That's very cool. Sunrise has useful features that will make you more productive. At least that's the hope. Find Sunrise Calendar for free in the Play Store. This last app, kind of made me smile when I saw it. Not because I'm gonna use it all the time, but because I'm happy it exists. It's proof that sometimes the simplest feature is enough to make an app totally useful. It's called Keyboard for Excel. But don't let that scare you off. Even if you aren't using Microsoft's popular spreadsheet software or any of its kind for that matter, you can still find value in this keyboard. And why would you want to? In portrait mode on my Nexus 7, it looks about as simple as any keyboard I've seen. Pretty straightforward stuff. That tab button I suppose is nice, but it doesn't really do anything in an app like Gmail. Now when I rotate to landscape, what to my wondering eyes should appear, but there it is, a number pad. A freaking number pad on the right side of the keyboard. Seriously, where have you been all my life? Now number pads aren't necessarily new by any stretch, but a number pad right next to the keyboard, always there. Ready for me to show off my mad skills jumping between text and numbers and back again without having to tap a button that switches the layout or long press a letter to get the number layer? That's pure magic. It should be noted that this keyboard only works on tablets. My oversized Nexus 6 is sad, but I suppose I understand. Okay, so maybe this isn't revolutionary for some reason. I love me a good number pad, obviously. And beyond that, I love that Microsoft cared enough to release this seemingly basic but void-filling keyboard to Android users. Microsoft, I like your mojo. Check out Keyboard for Excel right now in the Play Store for free. Now, I know Keyboard for Excel may feel a little out of place in this episode, it's kind of simple or whatever, but actually it's perfectly appropriate. Shortly after I finished writing my reviews for this week's episode, Microsoft announced on Google Plus the beta release of its Office Suite as independent standalone apps. So if you opt into the beta on the community page and become a tester, you can right now install Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel, and PowerPoint as separate apps on your device. They're all redesigned in the modern Android aesthetic, and yep, Keyboard for Excel is a fantastic companion when you're editing a spreadsheet with the new Excel app. Consider yourself armed and ready for the next major spreadsheet war or something like that. And finally, a feature that I missed initially in my Sunrise calendar review is the fact that the app actually integrates with a ton of external services like Evernote, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google Tasks. So if you have items in those services that are tied to a specific date, that item will appear inside of Sunrise, which is incredibly useful. And a new update rolling out actually today includes Wonderlist to their massive list of integrated accounts. Great app great features, and it's completely free. So you should definitely check it out. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that's Linda. I love Linda. Lynda.com is for problem solvers. It's for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to create an Android app. You want to take better photos, master Excel, sharpen your HTML skills. 
Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Some of the new Lynda.com courses that we recommend, Unity 5 2D Essential Training, there's Agile at Work, planning with Agile user stories and creating a responsive homepage marquee. Also, I know that we've talked about Code Clinic in the past. It's a multi-course series where lynda.com experts look at common code challenges and offer their solutions using C++, C++ there's C Sharp, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, and lynda.com has just added four new entries there covering JavaScript, C, R, and Swift. Here at Twit, we've used Lynda to learn new production platforms. I actually learned how to transition from Final Cut to Adobe Premiere uh, when we made that jump uh, months back. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts. They're all passionate about teaching, and it shows in the quality of their videos. Stream thousands of video courses on demand. Learn on your own schedule. Uh, really, you're learning at your own pace. Courses are actually structured so you can watch them from start to finish, or you can consume them in bite-sized pieces, uh, whichever way you want to go. Browse each course transcript to follow along, or you can search for an answer and skip right to that point. You can take notes as you go, refer to those later. Uh, they have tutorials that you can download and watch on the go, including access on your Android or your iOS device. You can create and save playlists of courses that you want to watch, so you can customize your learning path, share those with friends, your colleagues, share them with your team members. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to check out lynda.com slash arena and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's lynda.com slash arena. And we thank them for their support of this show and the network. And of course, when you support Twit sponsors, you're supporting Twit. So thank you as well. All right. This week's big app is why I love this section. Everyone on Android has been talking about Microsoft's latest experiment released just last week. Let's take a look. This week's big app fills a hole in the Android app library. We all felt a little left out when Instagram released its Hyperlapse app exclusively for iOS last year. Hyperlapse isn't just an Instagram thing. It's actually a technique designed to stabilize recorded video for high-speed playback. It's a cool look. Well, Instagram skipped Android, and who came along to fill the void? You guessed it, Microsoft. Last week, we saw the release of Microsoft Hyperlapse, but it's currently part of the beta program. So for now, look for the Hyperlapse beta community in Google+, follow the instructions for signing up and installing. The UI for the app is pretty darn simple at the moment. You really only have two options, import an existing movie, and you can record something new. If you choose to import an existing movie, it actually works really well, but do keep in mind, you'll need to make sure that its resolution is no more than 720p. Otherwise, the app is going to reject it. Thankfully, Microsoft has a web version that can process those higher res files. But for this review, let's record something new. You tap record, and you see the interface here. Uh, front or rear facing cameras can be set, of course. And you can throw on the flash as a fill light, if you like, so that's nice. Just tap that big red button and do something that you think will look cool in high speed, whether it be recording your drive, or walking behind someone for a long period of time. What you'll see in the finished video is that once bumpy movements should now be stabilized and smoothed out. When you stop recording, you'll get a preview of the effect and a dial that you can use to set how fast you want playback to be. You can even set it to normal playback speed and depending on the content, you'll see what the algorithm has done to smooth it out. Just look at how the background is steady, but the foreground kind of jumps around a little bit. It's somewhat hard to explain, but with the right footage, it's super cool. And seeing as how this is just the beta, I imagine great things and more importantly, broader device support is hopefully right around the corner. You can check it out for yourself by searching for Microsoft Hyperlapse for free in the Play Store. Hyperlapse is very cool. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, in hindsight, I realized that a few of the apps that I showed off today, including Hyperlapse, require you to take part in the beta program that's offered through Google Plus in the Play Store. I know I've discussed this process a few times in the past, uh, but how about a little refresher so you know how to get in on the fun if you want to going forward. First, you'll find the community on Google Plus uh, for the app 
they want to test and you can join it. There's a little button that says join community. Uh, then you'll get to the tester page and you can usually click through there from the uh, community page as well. When you get to the tester page, it has a big link that says become a tester. You just uh, check that off. And then once that's cleared, and sometimes you have to give it like an hour or so, but sometimes it's very fast. It's usually pretty quick for me. Uh, you can head back to the community page and you'll find a link there that goes to the Play Store. Uh, that Here you can see it displayed on the page. And that takes you to the Play Store so that you can actually install the app on your device. Now, as a tester of the app, you can actually help to refine it by adding any idiosyncrasies you discover uh, to that community page. That gives the developers of the app kind of a way to track bugs, get new ideas, really kind of refine the experience before its public release. Not to mention, you feel all awesome because you're in, you know, on the inside. You're one of the cool kids. At least that's why I do it. Uh, but very cool stuff. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, I always love hearing from you. Your recommendations are amazing. So please keep sending them to me, arena at twit.tv. There's also a subreddit for this show. I post categories there that, you know, I ask you to kind of submit links into, but you guys are kind of doing that too now. And I love it. In fact, um, my next episode, the one I'm working on for next week, is going to be based off of JJ's post in the uh, in the subreddit. And uh, JJ posted a category of to-do lists. So, you know, I'm going to do that one. There's others to add to, uh, from PDF readers to SMS apps. There's one that says, I can't believe my phone can do that. Uh, you know, use your imagination. Check out androidapparena.reddit.com and you can share your favorites with me like JJ did. You can follow me on Google+, Plus. talk about Android there from time to time. Uh, I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode. I'm on set to answer any questions you have about the apps in the show or anything Android. And that happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, following tech news tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course, if you miss the live taping, don't worry about it. We got you covered. Just all you need to know is head on over to the show page. That's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.